Yeah, so I, I um, my, my career background is, is a little bit convoluted, but I, I used to be a criminal lawyer in London. And so I did that for two years and that was my um, first job as a lawyer. And for various reasons, I, I didn't particularly enjoy criminal law. And um, so after just two years, I decided to do something else. I, I had a friend who was teaching at a, a Hagwon, that's a, a English academy in, uh, in Seoul. And I just kind of randomly just messaged him. I didn't really know anything about career and just said, you know, how's it going? Do you enjoy it? And we had a bit of a conversation on, on Facebook. And then within 24 hours of me first messaging him, a bit out of the blue and not knowing anything about career, I'd actually got a job offer to come and join his uh, the same place where he was working as a as a teacher. So it was um, it was quite spontaneous in a way, and um, I have to say my my parents kind of hated the idea of me giving up law to just teaching career when I, I didn't even know anything about career. But anyway, so then I, I came to Korea and I absolutely loved it. I was a, as a teacher for two years. And I, I just really loved career and I, I never really wanted to leave. I really wanted to just have a long term future here. But then I, I, um, I thought I didn't want to stay being a teacher because I think um, this is it's quite difficult to find a long term career path with progression within teaching. So I, I thought I should go back to law. So I um, and I thought after looking into it, I thought I've got no choice, but I've got to go back to my home country, the UK retrain a bit maybe in a different area of law so I've retrained in tax so I went to back to London for three years and um, yeah trained I, I did a graduate scheme at Deloitte tax did some tax qualifications did that for three years then I finally managed to get a job back in Korea at um, Lee & Co which is one of the big Korean law firms working in the tax team at Lee & Co um, specializing in international tax so that's that's my kind of career background. I think um, so. It, it's quite it's it's quite difficult to find a job in South Korea outside of English teaching as a as a non-Korean. So most or a very large number of foreigners that come to Korea for the first time, um, certainly from the UK and the US, they often come here as an English teacher, and they really enjoy it. But then they want to get another job outside of English teaching. And so I think if you want to get a job outside of English teaching, I think there's a few things you need to um, maybe bear in mind. I think the first thing is you've got to identify an area where you can somehow add value to a company beyond what a Korean can add. And I think in the in the vast majority of cases, unless you've got excellent Korean, which most foreigners don't, to be honest, a, a native Korean is going to be able to do the job better than you. So you've got to find an area where you can actually add some value. And I think what that normally means is you've got to find some kind of role where you have to deal with international clients or international customers, because then you're not only your language skills, you, being a native English speaker, but also um, your kind of cultural understanding of Western clients and Western companies that can be very useful to a Korean company. And so I think that's the kind of role you need to seek. You need to somehow be in a role where you're dealing with international clients and customers all the time. Um, so I think that's my first advice is you've got to find that kind of role. And then my, my second advice is, I think networking is extremely important to finding a job, probably anywhere, but definitely in Korea. And by that, I mean, I, I don't think you should be too reliant on online job advertisements and just emailing your CV into some fairly anonymous HR email address, which where you've got no relationship with them, because I, I think they're going to be receiving dozens and dozens of CVs. It'd be very difficult to stand out. And my success rate from emailing my CV to a job is just terribly, terribly low. It must be 1% or lower. I haven't counted. But so I think you need to build relationships and do networking so what I mean by that is you've got to identify people who might be somehow useful maybe through LinkedIn try and meet them for say like a coffee or lunch or something and then just get some information from them maybe they can refer you on to someone else or they, they can help you a bit and um, 
and and I think that's the way to do it and not least because also I think most job openings actually aren't advertised anyway so I think word of mouth and building up relationships is the best way to get it so I, th I think that that's probably my big two pieces of advice for a non-career and he wants to have a job in career So I, I think uh, what I enjoy is it's it, it's quite a different it's quite a different role from being a lawyer in in my home country. So I think in any law firm you you have people with like a different different skill sets and different emphases. So obviously you got a lot of people who are just technical legal experts, and that's the core service that a law firm provides is legal expertise. But then you also have people who um, lawyers, of course, they know about law, but maybe their focus is more on relationship building with clients. And so when I was in the UK, I was more one of the legal experts, kind of people who would do research, you know, quite deep research on some legal issue. Whereas here, I think naturally, because I'm not Korean and because I, I just don't have the language ability to do very in-depth research of the Korean law, I've naturally become more of a I've had I've got more of a focus on building client relationships and trying to win new business for my uh, my law firm. So I think it's a slightly different role. Of course, I still need to know about Korean law, but I'm not quite so much the technical expert. I'm more the the client side of things. And and often in a project, I'm kind of the bridge between a foreign client and a team of Korean lawyers. So I help to make sure there's no misunderstandings and make sure things aren't lost in translations. And so I'm a bit of a kind of well-informed legal project coordinator is, is, is kind of my role, I'd say. Yeah, I think in general, actually I've been quite pleasantly surprised because if, if you, um, uh, it, it, the, the kind of stereotypical image of Korean working culture is um, basically it's pretty bad. I mean, there's, there's lots of negative stereotypes of extremely long out working hours and rigid hierarchies and and forced after work binge drinking. And there's, there's lots of these stereotypes which I which I read about um, just just through internet research and then also watching Korean dramas. So I was a little bit apprehensive before I came here, but I've, I've got to say in my direct experience, I've never really experienced any of these negative things. I, I, um, it's, mu it's much freer and more flexible than I imagined. I've, I've never been forced to attend after work drinks. I've never particularly noticed any pervasive hierarchy. And yeah, in general, I, I find these stereotypes aren't particularly truthful. So I, I've been, yeah, I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, yeah, I definitely do. I, I, so I think Seoul is just a really brilliant place for, for food. And I, I've got a permanent battle to not get really fat, actually, So because there's so much great food everywhere. But um, I'd say my my favourite food, which I have regularly, is, is donkasu. So in English, it's fried pork, basically, fried pork and rice. And um, I probably have that three times a week. I mean, it, it's not particularly healthy, but it, it just tastes really good. Um, lots of variations of it so there's king size um there's you have it with cheese you can have it with curry so i really 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 like donkasu and it actually it's not a very traditional korean food it actually comes from a japanese uh, dish and then the japanese dish actually originally comes from german schnitzel so it's not very native but these days it's kind of like a modern korean dish and then I'd say the other one I love is um, yangnyeom chicken, which is basically it's fried chicken with this sort of sweet and sour sauce. And again, it's extremely unhealthy, but uh, it's just really excellent food.